This is the ultimate way to use studio mode in OBS Studio. This video is sponsored by OwnDop Pro. On OwnDop Pro, you can get a lot of overlay packs. Like actually a lot. I'm not just saying that for the advertisement. There are a lot of them. They come with a PR back screen, a starting soon screen, a camera scene, a gameplay scene, basically everything you need for your live stream. They even offer epidemic sound music which is the music I use for my streams. You don't have to worry about the music ever again. You know what the coolest thing about this all is, guys? With code TREE, you will get 50% off. Link is down below in the description. What is studio mode? Okay, so if you go to OBS, you see studio mode here. If you click on this, you'll see these two things, these two pages. And this is actually what studio mode is. But what can you do in studio mode? A lot of cool things. You can change things in your stream without them being seen in the live footage. Okay, so we have preview here and this is where we can change things. So for example, we can switch scenes here and here in the program, this is the live stream. It will not change. Like you see, we're still on the starting soon screen. This means we can mess with things around here without messing with it here. This is normally my camera, by the way, the Elgato no signal, but I'm using it to film this right now, so it's not connected. So what we can do is we can have our camera, so the camera scene, we can transform that to the program. If we click on transition here, we get our normal transition. So this is the standard transition you've set. We can see it's right here, right now. We can also just click on cut. So for example, if we have the game scene here, we can click on the cut and it immediately goes to the other side. Cut. Cut. We can also fade it for 30 seconds and then it goes with a slow fade or we can fade it in ourselves manually. We can add more transitions by clicking on a plus here and for example we can swipe and we click swipe and then it swipes instead. We can also set the milliseconds to be longer or shorter if you want the swipe to be longer or shorter. What we can also do is click on the cogwheel here. Here it says duplicate scene. This means that if we are on the same scene, for example this is the same scene. And I start moving things here or start adding things here. Uh, let's add an image. For example, see that. I click on OK. You see, this is the same scene. However, we don't see it in the program yet, even though we're having it in a preview here. If we click on transition, we're going to see it here too. We can still move it around and transition it through. Or we can cut it through. You can see it moves later than when it actually moves here. If you don't want it to be preview only, but immediately change here, we can click on here and then it changes on both scenes. So the duplicate scene is just so you can move this around while this is still static. We can also use duplicate source and then we can change this source to something else. So for example, properties, we're going to click on this and now we see we have a different source here. We change the source, but this is still the same cow right here, even though we change the source. Watch out though, if you do this, it takes a lot more CPU power than when you don't do that. <laughs> so watch out with a duplicate source. Swaps preview slash output scenes after transitioning. So this means that if I undo this, it cuts, but this stays on the same scene. But if we click on this and we go to starting soon, and we cut, you will see this was actually the program before, so this was the live stream, and it just switches the position of these two. As you see, it switches the position. If you untick this, it will stay on the same page. You will always cut from left to right, so you will always cut from the preview to the program. I mean, if you have this ticked down, it will also be from right to left. This is the same video as you see here, but it doesn't start playing until it's like actually in the live footage. There are some more settings that you need to be aware of. If we go to settings here and then we go to general, I mean, we're already in general, but <laughs> and then we scroll down, we see studio mode right here. These are some additional settings you can set for the studio mode. Okay, really quick break in between. Did you know you can become a member of my YouTube channel? Down below here somewhere is a button called member. If you click on that, you can become a member for only $2.99 a month. This gives you access to our private Discord server. And on this Discord server, I share so much premium information about streaming for both Twitch streamers and YouTube streamers. And for only $2.99, it's a bargain. Okay, back to OBS. Transition to scene while double clicked. Let's apply that. So if you double click, it transitions. This is a way to quickly transition to a different scene. So double click, enable portrait vertical layout. So this changes how the layout looks like 
and it makes it different. I mean, the things become really small, but maybe if you minimize your tab a different way or you have like a vertical monitor, it might be easy to work with this setup. Show preview program labels. These are just the labels up there. If we untick that, we see they're gone, but it's, uh, it's better to like show them to keep you as a reminder that this is just a preview and this is what you see live on stream. I'm so glad that you're making progress with your OBS. I want you to make even more progress setting things up. So here's a whole playlist full of videos that help you set up OBS because you know, stream smarter, not harder.